It's a marching order by Mr. President, and that marching order supersedes the position of Beja. Hello, guys. Welcome once again to Think Tank TV. Now, information reaching us has it that the federal government of Nigeria, through the Ministry of Works and the Minister of Works in person of David Umayi, has issued a seven days automaton to Julius Beggar Nigeria Limited to immediately resume the construction work at the Bonny Border Road project or face revocation of the contracts. Now, before I show you the video, let me first of all commend engineer David Umayi for being resolute to ensure he reprimands this construction giant. But I would like to advise that he does not just stop there. The federal government should immediately boycott Julius Bega and other construction giants who use their position to frustrate some of the construction projects that is going on in Nigeria. And I'm going to be giving you the reasons why I said that at the end of this video. Please, don't go anywhere because I'll be exposing a lot of the shenanigans of most of these multinationals in Nigeria. Do want to hit the comment section and drop your thoughts? Let's get to know what you think about the words of David Mahi and we shall continue to be here to serve him. Take a look. The President has directed the Ministry of Works to have this project completed by all means, not at all cost, by all means before the end of this year. And so it is, it is a marching order by Mr. President. And that marching order supersedes the position of Beja. Beja in their writing told us that they cannot complete this project this year. Yesterday, the Federal Executive Council frowned at the lens that contractors stay on site to complete a project. As a Minister for Works, I took very serious note of that. Second one is that this Ministry of Works will not be dictated for by any contractor. We will not allow a contractor to dictate for us. If this marriage fails, I want to recount that we'll be having a very, you know, troubling marriage with Beja since September 2023. And we'll be virtually negotiating a lot of projects being done by Beja. And uh, let me tell Bonnie Kingdom, we cannot isolate you more than the much we have isolated you because how important you are, just like every other section of this country is important because a chain is as strong as the weakest link. We are having a problem with Beja in uh, Lagos, Ibadan. We are having a problem with Beja in accepting our position in Second Niger Bridge. We are having a problem with Beja in completion of Abuja Kano. We are having a problem with Beja in the Cross River Dopani. And I have directed the Pan Secretary, instead of downloads, should embarrass this administration again, he must effect it from you know, the 16th of this month. I select three kilometers within this section of... You've seen it for yourself. Now, recall I promised that I'm going to be telling you why I decided to advise the federal government to boycott you as beggar and any other multinational that proves stubborn. The reason is simple. Information has it that when Julius Beggar was signing a contract with the Federal Ministry of Works, they agreed that there was not going to be any variation in the contracts. And in engineering, it is a known fact that when a contractor agrees that there is not going to be a variation, the contract sum is seemingly going to be overblown to an extent to cover for any other miscellaneous that would arise by virtue of the fact that there was not going to be a variation. Now, a few months into the construction of the Bonny Border Road project, which is actually in River State, Nigeria, that connects the Nigeria liquefied natural gas to the upland, the construction giant decided to stop work and pulled out of sight by virtue of the fact that they said um, they were no longer having the ability to complete the project because of the overblown nature and the overblown prices of things. It's quite understandable, it's business. But the question is that, like you can see in the Nigerian state, how these multinationals come here and take advantage of some of the leakages and the loopholes of the operational models in Nigeria like the issue of having cheap labor. They come here and take advantage of our labor 
that is very cheap as compared to what is obtainable on the international stage. They get the labor of Nigerians and use them the way they want, get their project done and cut away with huge amounts of money. So I don't see any reason why maybe you have a project and um, for some reason, somehow, you could not uh, get all the profits you are demanding. You cannot at least, by virtue of the fact that you have signed an agreement, go ahead to complete the project or at least remain on site and carry out negotiations. But these guys go ahead to make it look as though they are, they are, uh, they are, they are, they are the determining factor. They are going to be deciding for the federal government on how the project is going to be going. Just like you heard in David Omahi's um, statement, you can see from his disposition where he said that the, the construction companies are not going to be dictating for the ministry. It automatically means that most of these construction companies, by virtue of their political connections, go ahead to dictate for the ministry. You can imagine that this project was stalled for over six months. And it's actually a very bold step for the federal government to go ahead to say in seven days if they do not resume back to site the contract is going to be revoked now not just that these anomalies have actually been happening in the african states not just in the construction sites in most of, among most of these multinationals that come and take advantage of our workforce take advantage of a lot of things and cut away with millions of naira and i was saying i was talking to someone the other day i said for goodness sake, the federal government, before they can begin to go ahead to give such such large sums of contract to these multinationals and and, um, and construction construction giants, they should go into agreement with these kind of companies. They should go into joint ventures with these kind of companies, so that these people will not just come and cut away with the large sums of money they cut away from their Nigerian economy. And that is the reason why Nigeria keeps crying that we are broke because the leakages and loopholes that is available to siphon money out of this country are enormous. You can't tell me that the likes of DSTV, for instance, multi-choice, the federal government cannot set up a such a company, even if they cannot, because of the amount of monies that these companies cut away with from the Nigerian state. The federal government should, to an extent, have a stake with these multinationals, so that some of the monies that they are cutting away with will remain in this country, and the country will not be talking about being broke all the time. Look at what has been happening in the likes of Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, where these military junta's have come to realize how some of our political class align with some of the international communities to usurp the position of the nation, all in a bid for them to protect them to continually be in power. And this is exactly what is happening. How that these multinationals come in the name of business, but most of them are actually uh, the, the, the eyes of most of these international communities that use these strategies to siphon the funds of the nation out. And we keep complaining that there's no money in the country. And that is why I was sounding the way I did. That if they cannot come back to complete the project after I hear that David Omaye and the Ministry of Works had offered them an extra about 20 billion naira, they cannot come back to do the project, then yes, the project should be stalled. Please go to the comment section and drop your thoughts. Let's get to know what you think about the fact that David Omaye has been actually been resolute and has actually been showing capacity in the Ministry of Works and we shall continue to be here to serve you. Many thanks indeed to all our viewers and returning subscribers. We really do not take it lightly. My name again is Moses and this is Think Tank TV. See you on our next video.